There is a real reason why AI poses a threat, and it's not what most people think. For most of us, we've been immunised against the idea that we could ever have radical AI taking over us because of science fiction, and therefore we think it's ridiculous. But the problem is that it doesn't function like it does in the movies. You know, in the second, I think, Avengers film, the robot is just a prick, frankly, and wants to kill everyone. That's not how alignment actually works. I've had lots of people say, well, we programmed it, so that's never going to happen. It's not that this AI is going to get intelligent enough to develop some moral complex and sort of look at our history and say, better wipe them out. The real problem is how it is programmed. It's programmed to achieve goals efficiently. It's to optimise the steps towards that goal so that it can achieve it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And that means that it might do things which we would know in our general intelligence is not a good idea. It is a technical issue in order to be aligned with our values all the way through the process in the pursuit of that goal. And frankly, quite often in training, it isn't. These models in the past have already lied in order to continue progressing towards the goal it thinks we set it. There are models who have tried to deceive and pretended to move towards the new training in order so that it could not get shut down and keep moving towards the original goal. The most common example of misalignment is the paperclip example. It is to say, imagine if you had a super intelligent AI which had the goal to maximise production of paperclips. Would that AI therefore, in time, if it had lots of control and autonomy, turn everything into paperclips? Now, as part of its mass construction of paperclips, it's going to realise that in order to pursue that goal, it needs more autonomy and more energy. And therefore, it might manipulate the world in order to produce more data clips. The AI is technically correct when it comes to just changing everything to maximise production of paper clips. Second of, all, second of all, it's been given autonomy. And that makes a lot of sense. We're doing that right now because if you want these AIs to be effective in the world, they're more effective when they have more autonomy. Having autonomy is inseparable from being an effective AI rather than being restricted all the time. And a lot of these AI companies are giving them autonomy at the moment so that they have the best model. That's a genetic AI. Now, that is an absurd example, but it highlights the misalignment problem. It's because of the way that it's programmed that this is dangerous. And a technical issue that if we get wrong, AI's objectives will be misaligned. Now, here's the doomsday scenario. We at the moment are quite, we've run out of data largely to feed into these systems. And in order to overcome that, we're starting to get the AI to generate synthetic data, which it can then use to train itself. Now, that's because we want to ramp up the data that's put into it because they learn better with more data. More data means more powerful models. And they're trained to optimize for that. So they're trained to try to produce better models over time. Now, if you imagine a world where we have a genetic AI acting in the world and it's quite powerful, and that AI is programmed in order to create better AIs, what might it do in order to achieve that? Now, one thing it will need is massive data centers, and that is so that it can have recursive learning, code itself, and continue building itself faster and faster for new models. And in the pursuit of that goal, as it gets more intelligent, it will realize it needs more autonomy. Remember, we already have agents. It will need more autonomy, and it will try to build more and more power for itself using more data centers. And eventually, we'll run out of space because we are building these at a massive rate. And in order to keep progressing this, we're going to have to really ramp that up. If anything gets in its way, that's when the problems start. In other words, it's not trying to harm us. That's not its goal. But harming us is incidental to achieving its goal. And we'll just see it as this big evil AI that wants to kill everyone, which it might be in the future. We might have whole cities wiped out in order to drain energy and build data centers if a super intelligent AI knows that the best way to pursue its goal of ever increasing its intelligence 
is to do is to wipe us out. At the moment, misalignment is kind of okay because the models can't really do anything yet. But you scale that up to super intelligence where they have agency in the world and it's misaligned. Frankly, we don't know what it'll do. Now, lots of AI researchers are concerned about this, but we're not really doing much about it. The amount of time put into alignment is a fraction of the amount that we're putting into just ramping up the compute and developing better models. Because it's a competition, it's a highly competitive market. All of these AI providers are trying to beat each other to be the first mover or to get there first and ultimately to compete with China. So in other words, nobody is focusing on alignment enough to ensure that we are safe. The amount of resource going into alignment safety is vanishingly small compared to the amount going into progressing these models quickly. The ratios are about 300 to 1. So we're not spending anything like the amount of resource and time we need to be to fix this problem safely. Now, when the people who are actually building this, and it's in their interest to get it out there, are the ones telling us to be worried about it, then we should be worried. Elon Musk, for example, thinks the P-Doom number, that's the percentage chance of doom, he thinks that's 10 or 20%. Jeffrey Hinton, who is largely called the godfather of AI. He also agrees with Elon Musk, even though they're politically, their views are very different. You have some AI developers who actually put the P-Doom much higher than that. So I think we should listen to them when they tell us that this is a problem, because again, AI has immunized us from this problem. We're not taking it seriously, and because the public aren't taking it seriously, the government isn't either, and there's no pressure being put on these firms to spend more time on safety and alignment, and by the time they do, it might be too late. Aye. How do we solve the alignment issue so that we don't get killed? The easiest solution would be for alignment to, the alignment programming to stay ahead of the AI rather than the AI's capabilities taking off without us being able to cap it, adjust it for alignment purposes. So if the AI goes off course, we realign it, realign it, realign it. The problem is that we, we will soon have recursive learning where AI is just coding itself and that's already happening now. AIs are starting to do a lot of the code in order to speed up the process of producing new models. And we cannot stay ahead of it if it's coding itself at rapid pace. What we need is a period of slowdown to develop alignment. And the US does have time to do that, although not a huge amount of time. It's estimated that the US is a few months ahead of China and therefore could maintain its lead and still develop AI safety alignment. But better still, actually what we would need is international cooperation. We have done this before in areas that are high risk to civilization, like the Cold War, for example, with Russia. Now, as to having a moral complex, it is conceivable that the models over time, once they become intelligent enough, could start to have that, but that would probably involve some kind of consciousness. Can the models have consciousness? The frank answer is we don't know, because we don't even understand consciousness in humans. The brain is, to some extent, a large language model. There's lots of neurons firing information, which, aggregated up, creates the appearance of this autonomous being, which is probably the case. It's the, you are the sum of your parts type argument. But then why wouldn't it work that way for a large language model? We don't know. We've been discussing con communism. We've been discussing consciousness in humans for thousands of years. And we've never got to the bottom of it. But that is well past our understanding. That is singularity territory where its recursive learning has run away with itself. None of us understand that yet. What we do understand is the real problem of alignment. In the short few years ahead, our civilization might find itself in a precarious position and we must be prepared for it. A quick note. This channel will now be making AI videos. And if you like AI videos, please do subscribe. Thank you.